So you just got yourself a brand new Nvidia Shield Pro, or maybe you have one of the other official Android TV devices, like maybe the Xiaomi Mi Box, or maybe the previous generation Nvidia Shield, and you're now looking for some cool things you can do on your device. Well, I've had my Nvidia Shield Pro for about six weeks now, and during that time, I really have just learned so much that you can do on your device. So in this video today, let me share with you some of those things that I found that I do think that will help you get the most from your device. So with all of that being said, let's get started. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, the latest Fire Stick, Android and Android TV tips and tricks, then please do subscribe and hit the notification bell. It's a small click from you, but it makes a big difference to me. Thank you. So the first tip I have is, did you know you could actually get an official Shield TV application for your Android or for your iPhone? Now, so when you start the application for the first time, now you can just see my smartphone on the screen. Now this will do a scan off your home network and as long as your phone and your Shield are on the same network, you'll be able to see it in the list. Now as we can see here, it's found my Shield TV, which has the IP address ending in 139. So let me click on that now. And we can see straight away, I can now see all of the applications installed on my device. And let's say for example, I want to launch something, I can just click on an application and we can see that then it takes me into the application and I can now also use my phone as a virtual trackpad and also as a virtual keyboard. So if I just move my hand, we can see there goes the cursor there. So very easy to navigate around. And of course, if I want to type something, I can click here now I can now use the keyboard on my phone and quickly type in my website, for example, which is just bit.ly. Now, just as a reminder, guys, all of the tips and tricks, all of the applications mentioned in this video, I'm going to write all of them up into a dedicated tutorial, which I'll show you how you can access right now. So let's just type in bit.ly forward slash tduk. That's me and the numbers 2019. And we can see guys just typing on this virtual keyboard is so much quicker than selecting something using the standard remote control. So I can now use my virtual pointer and click on go. Now some of you may get an error here whereby you're not able to browse or download content using the built-in downloader application. Now there is a very easy fix for that. And if you look in the pinned comment, I'll give you the step-by-step -step instructions. It's actually a small two minute video on how you can fix downloading issues using downloader. So if you have any kind of message saying downloading is not supported or browsing is not supported on downloader, follow that tutorial in the pinned comment and that will easily fix that issue. And what we're going to do now is go to the tutorials page. So if you just use your standard remote control and let's click on the hamburger menu up here. Let's click on that. And we can now see there's actually a dedicated page for tutorials. Let's click on that. So once this video actually goes live, you'll see that the latest tutorial in the list will actually be Ultimate NVIDIA Shield Pro Secrets or Settings. So click on that and you can then read all of the steps mentioned in this video. And if you want to download anything, you will have direct links in that tutorial on exactly how you can do that. Now, the last cool thing this application can do is actually help you find your lost Shield remote control. I mean, who doesn't lose the remote control, you know, behind the sofa, under the telly or this is very easy to lose guys. So how can we find it? Well, the great thing is actually built into this application. If you click on the hamburger menu in the top right, we can see there's actually an option there which says find my remote. So I can now click on that and then click on start. And then within a few seconds, we hear that. And you should now be able to find your remote control. So that I think it really is a great feature of this application. And let me turn that off. So if you do ever lose your remote control, you could always use this application to find it. Next up, we have quite a simple one. But again, if you don't know, then you just don't know. Now I have installed quite a few third party applications onto my NVIDIA Shield, but if I try and add the application here onto my home row, we can see those applications don't actually appear. The two applications I installed recently, uh, one was Remote ADB Show and the other was the Project X Cloud. But as we can see, those applications don't appear in here. So only the applications officially designed for Android TV will appear in this list. So how can we access and start all of the other applications that we install onto our official Android TV devices? Well, the easy fix for that guys is to install an application called the Sideroad Launcher, which looks like that. So if I click on that, and this will now show me all of the applications installed on my device. So regardless of where you've installed any application from, you can access all of them by using the sideload launcher. So let's say for example, I want to start the remote ADB show. I can click on that 
and that starts straight away. So that really is a great way you can access all of the applications installed onto your device. The next one is how you can use a virtual mouse pointer by just using your standard remote control. So let's say for example, you're using an application which is not properly designed for Android TV and therefore you can't navigate using the standard remote control. How can you use the application? Well, you have a couple of options there. Either you could plug in a USB mouse, you could use a Bluetooth mouse, you can use the Shield TV application that I demonstrated before. But if you wanna do everything with the standard remote control, Watch what happens when I double press the play button. One, two. We can see there on the screen, I now have a virtual mouse that I can use directly from my remote control. So depending on the application, if it only works with the mouse, you can now use that directly from your directional pad. So if I wanna click on something, I click on that, and that takes me straight to the page. So once again, the application for this will be available on my tutorials page. And to turn off the virtual mouse, if I just press the home key once, and we can see that then disables the virtual mouse. So very easy to use. Next up we have, did you know you could actually play Google Stadia, which is now actually free for two months on your Nvidia Shield Pro with the standard remote control. You don't need to use any special Stadia controller or anything like that. I can now start enjoying all of these games free for two months on my Nvidia Shield. And we can see guys performance wise, that's performing really nicely. And let me do a, a melee attack. Uh, take that. Um, now I did actually do an in-depth video on this. Uh, so do check out my channel if you want to see that. Uh, but essentially we're going to use a specially modified version of Chromium. And through that browser, we can now access all of these games. Here you can see I'm using the standard remote control. I can navigate around. So let's say I want to play this uh, racing game. Let me click on that. I can now click on select. So they actually announced yesterday that Google Stadia is going to be free for two months. So that's two months off the pro service, which does give you nine free games to start playing straight away. Now, officially this only works on the Stadia device and a handful of phones and compatible Chromecast devices. It doesn't work natively on the Shield itself. This is why we have to use this particular workaround, but let's click on that. And we can see guys, it looks actually pretty good. Um, how do I accelerate? It's this one here. Okay, so here I am playing Google Stadia on my NVIDIA Shield Pro and it's looking pretty good guys. Um, so graphics wise looks good, sounds really good. Now input lag of course, it's not going to be instantaneous but we can see it's not really affecting my uh, driving, uh, not too much anyway. Um, now as with our now, as with all cloud streaming platforms or streaming services, you may notice some compression and some artifacts uh, in the graphics, but uh, to be honest guys, it doesn't look uh, too bad at all. And to be fair, the fact that you can enjoy all of these games, well, nine of these games directly on our Nvidia Shield or really any other Android device for free, um, I still think that's uh, pretty impressive. And whether you like it or not, I think it's safe to say that cloud-based game streaming is definitely going to be the future. So that's the next cool thing we can do on our NVIDIA Shield Pro, which is to enjoy Google Stadia for free using the standard NVIDIA Shield game controller. Next up, we have customizing the screensavers on your Android TV device. Now, I don't just mean any screensavers, I mean the official Aerial Dream screensavers that you have on the Apple TV devices. Let's start that up. Now, when you start this application, we can see the application has a very basic layout. We have four different sources. So we have the screensavers from the 2015 Apple TV, 2017, 2018, and 2019. Now, when you click on one of the video sources, we have options to disable that source. We can have a random video from that source. We can say we only wanna see daytime videos from there or nighttime videos, or even you can base it with your local time. So if it's nighttime for you, you'll see the nighttime video. And if it's daytime, you'll then see the daytime video, but I'll leave mine as nighttime. Then for the other three, you can choose whether you want to see a full HD or 4K or even disable. So I'll leave mine as full HD for the remaining uh, three video sources. Uh, we can also show the clock, uh, the location, now you have to understand these are going to be streamed to your device so you're not actually downloading them and keeping them it's going to be streamed as soon as the screensaver starts so definitely if you have any kind of you know data limit or you know bandwidth limit then i wouldn't recommend using the screensaver and let's click on test 
And these honestly have to be some of the nicest screensavers I've ever seen. And they look so good on the big screen. Here we can see a shot from Los Angeles. I mean, it all seems to be a drone footage or mostly drone footage anyway. Let's press the back button. Let's just try it one more time. Just look at that guys, just amazing picture quality, really calm, really peaceful, and definitely some of the best screensavers I've ever seen. Okay, let's press the back button. Now to actually apply these onto your Android TV device, if you click on your screensaver options, let's click on that. And we can see we can now actually customize which screensaver our Nvidia Shield will actually use. So let's click on screensaver. And let's change that to Aerial Dream. And you can also specify when the screensaver starts. So we'll leave it as five minutes for now. And here you can specify when your device goes to sleep. And that's pretty much it, guys. You can now start enjoying all of these amazing 4K Apple TV screensavers. And here we can just see London, home of Tech Doctor UK. So definitely, guys, especially during this isolation, it's just so nice to see the outside world. Now for this tip, I would say it's a little bit on the advanced side. We're going to make some system changes to really improve the UI performance, the user interface performance of our official Android TV device. Now to do that, if you just go over to your device preferences and let's click on about, let's scroll down. And what we want to do here is where it says build number, we want to press the select button on this seven times. So let's do that now. One, two, three, and we get the message there, you are now four steps or four clicks from being a developer. So let's keep on pressing that select button. There we go, it says we're now a developer. So what this actually means is, this opens up a hidden menu for developer options. Now, just a quick and serious disclaimer here, guys. I highly recommend you don't mess about with the things inside the developer options if you don't know what you're doing because making some changes in there could cause some serious issues on your device. So don't mess about unless you know what you're doing. Okay, let's press the back button once. Let's scroll down again. And we can see we now have this developer options menu. So let's open that up. Let's scroll down. Now, if you ever wanted to make an ADB connection over the network onto your device, this is how you do it. You would enable the developer options first, and then you will enable this network debugging. So let me turn mine on as well. So this just means you can make ADB connections over the network to your device. But what we're actually looking for in here is how to improve the performance of the user interface. Let's keep going down. And here we can see we have three options, which is your Windows animation scale, your transition animation scale, and your animated duration scale. Now, all of these by default are set to one times, but if you really want to maximize the performance of your device, you don't really care about animations. I can click on this and I can say off. Now, before I do that, let me just show you the difference it actually makes. So, so let's say, for example, this was actually at five times. Can you see how slowly that closes? Because it's now taking five times as long to close that animation. Let's go back to the default, which is one times. So this is currently the default setting. So we can see it slides back fairly quickly. But again, if you really want the maximum performance, I'm going to go for this. And watch how quickly it disappears. You can see, I mean, you basically you can't even see the animation because, again, you've now turned that off. Similarly for this, let's also turn that off. And lastly for this one here, let's turn that off. So now if I press the home key, everything should just seem that little bit snappier because you're not really waiting for those animations to load or for things to open. And we can see that it does actually feel a lot snappier now. Just clicking on things, opening menus, everything just opens up instantaneously. So that's all for this video, guys. Many thanks for watching. I hope you did actually find something of use in this video. If you did, please leave a like. If you want to see more tutorials for the NVIDIA Shield or the Fire Stick or the second generation Fire TV Cube, then please do think about subscribing and hitting that notification bell. As always, I always appreciate your likes, your shares, your comments. So do let me know what you think. Leave me a comment below and I'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon. Thanks.